So the social effects, what happened to people? How are people affected by the flooding? Well, there was one death, and this was a police officer called Bill Barker. He died when he was telling cars and lorries not to travel over a bridge that was breaking. Unfortunately, he got washed in. One death, which is quite surprising considering how few people there were around there. Many other people got injured, so there are a few injuries going on. About 1,500 homes were flooded. The river water got contaminated with sewage, leading to a lot of illness and health risks. Overall, 1,300 people, sorry, 1,300 people got affected by this, so not everyone was there, even though there were more homes. A lot of them are holiday homes. And the disruption of road communication caused a lot of trouble, a lot of hardship to local people. It became difficult to get to school, to get to doctor's appointments, doctor's surgeries, and even get to banks if people needed money after this. Some of the economic effects, so things to do with money. Many businesses closed down, so we had businesses completely shutting forever. Uh, some of them didn't open until a long time afterwards. All of these places lost a lot of money due to not a lack of trade. So tourists didn't come, there weren't people shopping, some places couldn't afford to stay open. There was a lot of debris, so a lot of like the rocks and trees that had fallen into the river, and that destroyed a lot of the bridges. That was really expensive to fix. Overall, the flood cost over a hundred million pounds in damages. So that includes all of the insurance claims, all of the business costs, and of course, how much it takes to rebuild it. So there was a couple of environmental effects as well. A lot of the water caused a lot of erosion by the River Derwent, meaning we had a lot of landslides, rocks falling into the river along its banks. And as I mentioned before, those rocks and the trees helped destroy bridges as well, but there was a lot of damage to the land. Also, the river carried away hundreds of trees, which damaged the local ecosystems and animal habitats. And it also meant it was more likely to flood again in the future because trees absorb water. So just so you can get a bit of context about how bad the floods were, here's a picture of me in my younger days visiting Cockermouth. Um, you can see how tall I am. I am under six foot, I'm five foot um, eight. Uh, and the flooding actually reached a lot higher than I am. It reached eight foot, so it caused a lot of damage in the area. So that flooding was really, really deep. You can also see the effects of the flooding on the town. This is a picture from where I was stood there of that board of what it was like once all the water had drained away. As you can see, we've got all of this debris, debris even that I mentioned earlier, and the shops at the back are damaged and closed. So we've got a lot of damage caused by the flooding in this picture. Take a little look and see if you can tell what the damage is. You can pause me if you like. OK, so let's have a look at what it looked like after they fixed it up, or what it should usually look like. There we are. So a much different picture. So you can tell all of that damage had to be fixed up and there was a huge cost to this. And this is a shop I saw, and this was about two years later. Places were still being fixed up to be opened up. So this shop was open because of the flood, but it had to have signs because it was flood damaged. Now this is continuously happening. We're getting more and more effects of extreme weather and this keeps happening in Cockermouth. So flooding in this area is bad. So what you're going to have to do is look at the different effects and think about which ones are most important. Good luck.